Hello, you're watching Shalom World News. I'm Donna Villa, coming to you from Chicago, USA. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. The Holy See is intervening in the Ukraine crisis in more ways than one to usher in peace and provide assistance to the displaced people, said Cardinal Pietro Parolin, the Vatican Secretary of State, said on Monday, March 7. Speaking at an Italian TV channel, the top prelate warned of an escalation on conflict triggered by angry rhetoric. He said, quote, when one begins to use certain words and expressions, they do nothing but inflame tempers and naturally and insensitively lead to the use of other means, which are the deadly weapons we see in action at the moment in Ukraine, end quote. The Secretary of State said that the Holy See is intervening in the conflict at the spiritual, humanitarian, and diplomatic levels. The Cardinal added that Caritas International is coordinating with Caritas Ukraine and Caritas Spes to bring relief materials and medicine to internally displaced people and also Ukrainian refugees in Poland and other countries. He also reiterated that the Holy See is willing to help defuse the crisis using all possible means. Ignoring President Vladimir Putin's crackdown on anti-war protesters and peace activists, a large group of Russian Orthodox priests have started a bold campaign calling for an immediate truce in Ukraine. This gained significance as the Russian Orthodox Church staunchly supports Putin. In his sermon on Sunday, March 6th, Patriarch Kirill, who heads the church, openly endorsed the Russian invasion, calling it a just war. In their petition, the Russian Orthodox priest and archpriest said they are requesting everyone, quote, on whom the cessation of the fratricidal war in Ukraine depends with a call for reconciliation and an immediate ceasefire, end quote. The priest reminded that the faithful, that the last judgment awaits everyone and no earthly authority can protect anyone from it. They also mourned the tribulations of Ukrainians and called for the safe return of Russian and Ukrainian troops to their families. As the U.S. Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas designated Ukraine with Temporary Protected Status, or TPS, allowing foreign nationals to remain and work in the United States during a period in which it is not safe for them to return home, the Catholic prelates have come out with a statement hailing this move. In the statement by Bishop Mario Dorsonville, Auxiliary Bishop of Washington and Chairman of the U.S. Conference of Catholics Bishops, USCCB Committee on Migration, he said that they are watching with deep concern the unfolding events in Ukraine and the devastation faced by its people. The bishop added that the internally displaced people and refugees remind everyone of the plight of the Holy Family into Egypt. In the statement, the prelate welcomed the secretary's designation of TPS for Ukraine, which provides important protections for Ukrainians already in the United States. He also appealed to the Biden administration and Congress to ensure that the U.S. Refugee Admissions Program receives all necessary resources. Major Archbishop Sviatoslav Shevchuk, the head of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church, expressed gratitude to the matchless magnanimity of the Polish people and its government in welcoming Ukrainian refugees with open arms. The top prelate of the largest Oriental Catholic Church in union with Rome said in a video message on Monday, March 7th, that he would like to thank the Polish people the bishops of Poland, and the government as they have welcomed more than one million refugees. He also made a special mention on how the Poles are also welcoming refugees in their homes and trying to do everything possible for to make their stay comfortable. In this video message, the top prelate said, quote, May the Lord God repay you a hundredfold, end quote. As per the United Nations Refugee Agency, more than 1.7 million Ukrainians have fled the country since the Russian invasion began on February 24th. Poland is hosting 60% of the refugees. 
As part of the International Women's Day that is observed on March 8th, a prominent Christian rights outfit in Pakistan hosted a seminar exposing the vulnerability of women and girls belonging to minority communities on Monday, March 7th. Entitled Break the Bias and Forced Conversions in Pakistan, the event focused on the abduction, sexual assault, forced conversion to Islam, and forced marriage of young women and underage girls from minority communities, especially Christians. The event was held by Voice for Justice, a prominent organization that fights Christian persecution in the Muslim-majority country in the port city of Karachi. As of late, attacks on minority communities are on the rise in the country, and Human Rights Watch has revealed that the government is doing little to tackle the malaise. The seminar also discussed other incidents of violence against women, including rape, domestic abuse, acid attacks, and honor killings. There is good news from Egypt where President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi has announced that in new urban residential projects, permits will be issued to construct churches alongside mosques. During a recent meeting with members of the government in charge of urbanization projects, the president remarked, quote, where there is a mosque, there must also be a church. And if the church to be built will be attended by just 100 people, it must be built anyway so no one will have to meet in an apartment and present that private house as a church, end quote. This new assignment has been hailed by representatives of the Christian community and ecclesiastical officials. This new mandate changes the Ottoman era curbs on constructing new churches or rebuilding dilapidated ones. Until 2016, the so-called Ten Rules of the Ottoman Period hampered the building of new Christian places of worship. Reassuring the Holy Father's closeness for Ukrainian refugees and carrying his prayers and greetings to the war-afflicted people, Papal Almoner Cardinal Konrad Krajewski departed for Poland to support the refugees there who arrived after the Russian invasion in Ukraine. While in Poland, the Cardinal said, quote, I don't know how far I will be able to go, but I will try to show anyone I meet the closeness and encouragement of the Holy Father. I am not afraid. I think of the gospel, end quote. After visiting the refugee shelters at the Polish-Ukrainian border, the Cardinal will depart for the war-torn region of Ukraine. In his Angelus address on Sunday, March 6th, Pope Francis announced that the Polish Cardinal and Cardinal Michael Czerny, the interim prefect of the Vatican's dicastery for promoting integral human development, would be sent to Ukraine to support the Ukrainian people and volunteers assisting refugees. According to the UN reports following the Russian invasion, nearly 1.7 million people have fled Ukraine, of which nearly 1 million have crossed the Polish border. Cheering the young people in their preparations for World Youth Day, Pope Francis has sent a video message in which he said he looks forward to meeting them. The World Youth Day 2023 will be held in the Portuguese capital, Lisbon, from August 1st through the 6th. The Holy Father motivated the volunteers of the International Youth Meet to, quote, ensure that WYD 2023 will be a youthful, joyful, lively, and a memorable experience for all, offering the joyful hope that faith in God brings, end quote. In the message, the Holy Father urged the youth to consider how to address and overcome the world's current difficulties by bearing witness to the hope that comes with faith. He further emphasized that crises provide an opportunity to strive for better and emerge stronger. Concluding the video message, the Holy Father promised them his prayers and asked them to pray for him and his ministry. He likewise invoked God's blessings and the Blessed Mother's protection upon them. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us tomorrow. In the meantime, you can visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.